Yeah, it's great to have you with us. Thanks for inviting me. Um, so there's a lot to sort of walk through with this um, drop in the euro. But it does seem to me that the ECB is in a real predicament in terms of its fight against inflation um, and its own currency dropping like they are, of course, bringing yields down as well. So what, what's next here? Yeah, so the, the key focus right now and the reason why the euro is, is trading so poorly is that we essentially have a full-blown energy crisis going on in, in the eurozone, right? So today is a perfect example. Like, uh, we've talked about uh, crude oil being down dramatically. And then you look at what's going on in, in European natural gas prices. They are up dramatically, right? So we, we have a very specific phenomenon that is impacted the eurozone. And we used to always have like a, a trade surplus, a current account surplus in the eurozone. Now they have a deficit. So everything is flipped around. And it, for the ECB, it's a major, major challenge. It's, it's the first time, essentially, since the euro was created that they have a, a real inflation challenge to deal with, right? And they haven't started hiking yet. Uh, and, uh, and now we're already talking about a recession in the eurozone and, and the euro is going down. So it's an extremely challenging situation that ECB is facing. The, dy the dynamic and the impact on the U.S. dollar and rates is interesting as well, Jens. I mean, of course, we saw a big spike in the dollar index. I mean, it was up more than a percent in today's session. We saw a drop in rates. Um, and so, I mean, how does this play out? Because if we see a drop in bonds, traditionally that has been an anchor for U.S. rates. And yet we're seeing a spike in the dollar. We're seeing U.S. rates go down here. Yeah, so, so it is very often the case that when you have essentially global growth expectations going down, the dollar benefits, irrespective of what U.S. interest rates are doing. And that's exactly what we've been seeing over the last several weeks. And, and I have to say, at this, at this specific juncture, uh, the global cycle is in trouble. And uh, different central banks around the world are trying to tighten into a, a weak growth environment, and they are not seeing the benefit to their currencies, right? So that is really the, the key argument to be constructive on the, on the dollar in a kind of bearish environment. And I think we're probably going to see more of that in the next one to two months. And, and we could even see a situation where there's now hope that the, EC, uh, excuse me, that the Fed is going to relax a little bit. What happens if payrolls are strong this week? What happens if C CPI is again elevated in the next reading? The, the Fed will have a very hard time relaxing, right? So this rally we've seen in interest rates, if the Fed actually starts to push back against that, which based on the recent data, in labor market, they will, they will have to continue to push back. It's going to be a big, big issue. Hey, Jens, Jeff Mills here. So I wanted to go back to the ECB. I thought the point you made about the ECB's credibility being tested here was a really interesting one. Let's play that out a little bit further. You know, if, if they become more hawkish and they're unable to get rates to move the way they want, if they're unable to get the currency to move the way they want, you know, what is sort of the worst case scenario if the ECB sort of loses control uh, of the situation over in Europe? Well, the worst case scenario is that, that we just have a, an inflation dynamic that is not under control, right? So uh, before the euro was created, we had a, a Deutsche Mark that uh, was perceived to be a very credible currency and uh, kept inflation under control in, in Germany better than in almost any other country in, in the world. And if that goes out of the window, it's going to be a huge problem for the euro itself. It's also going to be a political problem. And that's then going to exacerbate the, the, the challenges to the euro. So that's really the, the spectrum of possibilities that we're looking at. It's a quite serious situation here. Yeah, so, Wienz, what's your forecast for, for euro dollar? I mean, do we break parity this summer? That's the Nomura forecast from this morning. Yeah, so I, I think if the energy issues in the eurozone persist, i.e. natural gas prices st stay at these incredibly elevated uh, levels where it's hard for certain sectors to produce, then I think it's quite realistic that we break parity very soon. But it's a very binary thing, right? If, these, if the gas uh, continues to flow a little bit better and the inventories are building, uh, then we can see some relief. So we, we're watching literally the natural gas flow hour by hour in the extensive data system, right? Because it's a key variable. And if that goes south another leg, we're going to have a full-blown energy crisis and the euro is going to take another leg lower.